We have some big updates today with the Windows utility as I've really done a lot of commits, probably about 50 commits in the past couple days. And I have a whole programming sprint for all of this month to really take it to that next level. Let's get on the desktop and check it out. Okay, so this is a brand new fresh install from uh, just a, a disk. So let's go ahead, pull up our task manager and just kind of show you what our processes are sitting at. Right now, about 120 processes, 121. This is probably a little higher because this is virtualized, uh, where a non-virtualized usually hovers around about 10 less processes, about 110. But let's fix this. We're gonna actually just go into Windows Terminal as admin. This is Windows 11, but the same thing works on Windows 10. From our PowerShell, the very first thing we do is just launch the script. We do an IWR, which stands for Invoke Web Request. And then we're gonna do USEB and then type HTTPS ChrisTitus.com forward slash win. And then we just pipe it into an executable like this. This executes the script. Uh, a lot of people ask for executables, so I want to first say thank you to everyone that donated for the executable over on cttstore.com. I'll put a link down in the description if you want a full-blown executable, but this does the exact same thing. This is just a wrapper for it. The very first thing you're going to notice if you run the tool in the past is we have a little bit more pretty interface, which uh, I just kind of want to show real fast. Uh, I designed a bit more, took out some debugging, so you kind of see what's happening in the background a little bit more. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like ear trumpet. If there's any more programs that you want me to add in the install portion, as long as it's available in WinGit, I'll add them. And uh, I've just kind of slowly been expanding this out to where it's even better than Night Night now. And just overall, just an amazing experience. But even if you don't use this, what you can do is just click the upgrade installs button. This does a win get and uh, upgrades any existing installs. Now, obviously, since this is a fresh install, we really don't have anything, uh, but we will install Ear Trumpet just so you could see that. If you're not familiar with Ear Trumpet, you know how this volume button down here kind of just sucks in Windows 11? Uh, Ear Trumpet kind of fixes that. So I really like Ear Trumpet. And this is the first thing that we did. Uh, to improve it. And I say we because there's a lot of talented people that have uh, contributed to this project, which I'll get into here in a minute. Uh, we just hit update. Sometimes this fails out of the gate, which is fine on the first run, um, but usually it catches it again. Now it looks like on this fresh Windows 11 install, I ran into something to Microsoft just keeps changing stuff up a bit, uh, but I did have to launch the Microsoft store and then go into the library down here and actually click update manually to Wingit. Wingit's actually installed by default, but I thought that was kind of interesting. So let's try and install Ear Trumpet again this time. And this time I, I believe it's gonna work, yeah. Uh, so an interesting bug there, if you do run into it, that was my fix for it, but I'll see if I can't figure out another workaround as right now with Wingit and the install process, uh, we are working on a, a multitude of different ways to install it from MSI bundles directly from the store. Um, so it's just kind of a moving target as Microsoft doesn't really like the fact I'm kind of bypassing the Microsoft store for uh, to do this. Uh, now, the tweak section, I've done a lot of optimizations and you see like the console is much, much cleaner. Uh, so let's uh, actually move that over a bit. And I'm just going to kind of show you, we'll just do a desktop install here and run the tweaks. I cleared up a lot of the red text we were getting uh, because I really want you to see exactly what it's doing. And then you can actually debug it or look at it in the actual PowerShell file. And then as far as the config features, a couple new things. We have an SFC scan now. Uh, I did fix up some of the updates, which we're about to get into. All the legacy panels are just kind of here for fun, uh, which I really, really like those. Uh, and just like the sound setting, I always come in here. This is uh, mmsys.cpl. So this is the convince section. I don't use this too much because honestly, I know all the commands. So I usually, if I'm trying to go sound or power panel or even just basic control panel, usually I just do it manually without even pulling up my utility. But they're very, very nice uh, shortcuts to have to access and configure system because going through 
the new settings menu in Windows 11 and Windows 10 is just kind of a nightmare. So I don't really like it. Uh, and then the updates. Now this section I'm about to overhaul a bit. There's, I think, some misspellings and I don't like how this is structured. I don't think it's very clear to some users. Obviously the disable all, not a, you know, that's not recommended, but some people have asked for it. The default out of box settings is something else that it just resets everything to how it was as you first installed it. Uh, so that's like a complete reset. Uh, and then we have the security ones, which I always recommend doing. It just basically delays feature updates a couple of years and security updates ju just about a week. And that is what I recommend doing on every Windows install. And here is also the final uh, processor count after a reboot, after running this tool and just the basic desktop tweaks. Uh, as you see, pretty awesome upper 60s, lower 70s, uh, far better than the 120 range we were running into, just much more performant and just how Windows really should be out of the box. Now, a couple other things here that I, I wanted to go over under the tweak section. This undo all was not working properly before, so I apologize if something messed up or you had a uh, problem with the tool before and then you try to undo it and the undo didn't work. Um, this now does work. Uh, I went back through, kind of cleaned up some stuff, anything added, I make sure that that was removed during the undo section, uh, as I thought that was kind of important to make sure that it's very easy to basically tweak everything. So this is the update on the tool right here, but on the GitHub where a lot of the issues reside, I want to show you what the future holds. So here over on the GitHub is where we have all the future new stuff. If you have a problem, pull requests, all the things can go right here. It's where most of the development happens or on pretty much all the development. I've expanded the readme to make this a little bit easier. If you want to contribute and get an executable wrapper, uh, this right here is how all this is funneled. Without everyone that has bought the executable, I would probably no longer be maintaining this project, but so many people have that I will be basically improving it and making it even better for now into the future for a very long time. So thank you everyone that has contributed there. And now I want to show some cool future fork requests, specifically some really neat things. Um, Carter and, and the developer derp here. I, I love watching what other people do with my projects right now. Developer derp's working on run spaces, which is how you can use different threads of your processor to make things a little bit faster but also a bit seamless. You know how you, when you click update on the actual utility, sometimes that freezes the computer. Run spaces would fix that. Same with jobs. Uh, jobs is, I think, a little bit more of a simpler solution than run spaces, but uh, also that it poses its own set of problems, which I've been watching uh, what Carter's doing over there, which amazing. Thank you guys so much. I love watching these forks work. And then over on the issues thing, what I've done is I went through the issues, anything that, uh, I didn't think was an issue or it was resolved recently. I, I went ahead and closed and uh, anything that's a feature request in here, I left open, but I added it to what's called a feature sprint. Usually this is done in Scrum and some programming circles. I don't know much about programming, so per se, but I do understand management. And uh, what I did was I took all those feature requests and I bundled it up into a feature sprint that I will finish in September. So sometime in October, I'll make this video again. Uh, showcasing all these new things. There's specific things that people have asked for from uh, Cortana removal. I'll probably add Defender into here uh, as many people have asked for it. And Microsoft has started flagging all my programs. So I'm just going to be like, all right, Microsoft, you want to play dirty? I'm going to show people how to rip out Defender. I'm going to show them how to completely rip out UAC and give a very minimal Windows experience without your intervention. And you're not going to have anything to say about it because you won't have a say in what goes on your actual windows. Uh, you, the user will not Microsoft. Uh, so I thought, uh, there are a couple little things there where I, I've just gotten a little salty as I've developed this tool and, and also the executable was signing that I've, uh, kind of dealt with this. And I was like, man, I feel so bad for professional developers that deal with this. And, uh, I'm going to basically fix all that. I also have a, a video probably coming out next week, specifically going over a new feature I'll be adding 
which is ripping out UAC entirety. So what they do a lot of times, let's say we go admin, you get this prompt. And this is usually what's called user account control. You can see it at the title here. Now you can say change when these notifications are and put never notify, but UAC is still active in the background. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds pretty insecure and you're right. But why would you disable UAC as older programs, specifically some Windows 7 era programs, some even older like Vista, just don't run on modern Windows because of UAC. UAC sees like a setup executable and that tries to access the registry. It shuts it down and says, no, this will not run. And putting it to never notify, this actually just puts it in silent mode. UAC is still there. To rip out UAC, you have to do a little more tweaking, which I think I'll just add a tick box in my tool. For those that really want UAC completely gone from their lives, they don't want it anywhere in their Windows instance, and they want to go back 10 years, I'll take you there. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of a, a cool thing. I will turn it to silent mode. Uh, but this is some just different things I've been working on. And uh, I want to just hear from you guys. When it comes to these issues and things you have, open up a ticket, follow those procedures. If you're going to do a pull request, remember, always do it on the test branch. Never do it on the main branch, as I always vet all the pull requests that come in. And I want to make sure we have a really nice, cohesive uh, submission to where everyone always has a great experience when they use this toolbox. And now that it's been almost a full year since this has been developed, uh, it, maybe it's been a year and a half. I don't know. Um, I'm going to just keep working at it. It's going to just keep getting better and better and better. And anything you want done in Windows that now you used to be able to do it and you can't do it anymore, let me know about it because I'm going to fix it. I'm just going to keep ripping down and, and any kind of roadblocks Microsoft throws up, I will remove so you can have a pleasant experience if you want to use Windows. And if you don't, well, like I said, there's a plenty of options out there, whether you want to go to Mac, whether you want Linux, whatever uh, operating system you want to do. Uh, I'm all game for it. I, I love switching and I hate the stock Windows experience with a dire passion. And that will continue from now and well into the future. So thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for all the supporters that helped made this possible and keep making it possible. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.